pilgrimage. Many people do know the exact moment when they came to Christ. Others, however, come to Christ over a period of time and cannot say exactly when they crossed the line. You see, I know why now all these people that I'm involved in teaching them, they don't have any assurance. There's no assurance in this. You don't even know if you're a Christian or not. People writing in and he's telling you, well, you know, you might think you're a Christian. You might not even know if you've actually crossed over the line or not. And he said everybody has their own story. Look at this. Here's the words of Christ on that. Through his faithful servant Jew, beloved, when I gave all justice and to you, the common salvation. You won't hear any stories in the church of Christ. It's all the same. Every one of us has the same salvation account. You know what? It's the same as Saul of Tarsus, the chief of sinners. And it begins and ends with humble obedience. Remember Romans 1, 5, obedience to the faith. Romans 16, 25, obedience to the faith. It begins and ends with obedience. I understood that Jesus Christ died for me to save my soul. A sinner condemned to die. It's a love story. I understand that. I recognize that I have to repent of that kind of life. I have to confess that He is Lord. I have to repent of that kind of life. And I have to be baptized because He said so. For the removal of my sins. Or for God to raise me to walk in newness of life. Or, Colossians 2.12, if you want to put it there, so that God can operate on me as He operated on His Son in that burial. Raise me to walk in newness of life. There it is. That gives God glory. Let me tell you something. You going in that, into that baptistry, that gives God glory. It's not a boasting event. You're going to come out looking like a wet rat. I'll tell you ahead of time. That's what you're going to look like. It's humbling. Ladies, we'll give you a cap so you don't look so bad. It's humbling. And it takes a great level of faith to go to this degree and say, this is where I'm born again, John 3, 5, a birth. This is where I crucify myself and I bury myself a death. This, Romans 6, verse 3 and 4. This is where I'm married to Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Did you hear that? You've let a preacher talk you out of the most amazing point in your life. Your, new, your death, your new birth, and your marriage to Jesus Christ. And I have the Baptist man right here that says that we utterly, utterly, utterly repudiate Baptismal regeneration. Here it is. Standard Manual for Baptist Churches. Page 21. It says, Baptism is not essential to salvation, for our churches utterly repudiate the dogma of baptismal rebirth. That's what regeneration says. Now, folks, you might have thought that I'm arrogant and whatever, but look what I'm up against. The people that I'm actually trying to deliver you from, they're telling you that this event that the Apostle Paul tells you that he went through and taught everybody to go through, your point of your death, burial, resurrection, your marriage to Christ is utterly, is not essential, and will they utterly repudiate? Well, what am I supposed to do? I've got to stand up for it. This is the verses that we read a moment ago, and these Bibles trying to get rid of it. Just go ahead and pray for it. This is what you find in every gas station, bathroom, uh, eating place, and establishment around. Pray a sinner's prayer. You know what's missing on that? You know what's missing on that. We'll give $1,000 for anybody who can put the verse on that. There is no verse. We'll raise it to 10000 if that would get your preacher to come in and write a verse under there. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to examine that verse. There's no verse that teaches the sinner's prayer. It's just not in there. Not after Jesus sent out his apostles to preach. The gospel to every creature. Every creature, Mark 16, 16, has to believe that Jesus is the Christ and be baptized in order to be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. It doesn't have to say he that believeth not is baptized not. You know if you don't believe you're not going to be baptized. Jesus does not have to be uh, redundant and repeat himself. If you don't believe, you're not going to be baptized. You'll be damned. That's strong language. It's not any stronger than we utterly repudiate baptism, is it? Rebirth. Tonight, you can actually see what the Bible says for yourself. And the question is, who are you going to follow? Now, this is the scary part tonight. I've seen people obey right here. This is the scary part. In Ephesians chapter 4, 17, This I say, therefore, and testify the Lord that ye have forced walk not as Gentiles. Other Gentiles walk in the vanity of your mind, having your understanding darkened. 
Understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness. He continues on. Do you mean to tell me you can get the, to the point of past feeling? Let me ask you tonight if you're a visitor. How many times have you heard this? Read it for yourself. Heard persons like Randy and different gospel preachers say that we're ready to defend this in public oral discussion with anybody who will say that they utterly repudiate it in front of us. I challenge any preacher anywhere, anytime, and we'll pay for the time. That's not arrogant. That's me defending the faith, the common salvation. Why am I doing it for your soul? I want you to have a chance to experience the love of God. And someone is trying their best to keep you from it, and the Bible's telling you that you can get to the point where the pen won't prick. You can hear this so many times that it gets to the point, and so many things happen in front of you, and you get to the point that you can't be touched. My question is tonight, are you in control? How do you know you're in control? When we sing the invitation song that basically gives you the time to mull this over, decide whether you're going to be obedient right now, confess that you believe in Jesus Christ, let someone assist you, assist you in passive. There is a passive point in passively being buried into Christ. There's your passive point. The question is, are you holding back? Are you sure? How can you decide if you're holding you or the devil's holding you? Break loose. If Jesus was standing there tonight at that door and he was saying, instead of Peter, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Would you do it tonight if Jesus said it? Jesus had Peter say it. Say it. Would you do it if Jesus said what Ananias said? Why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? You know we've established it tonight. I just can't believe. I've tried as hard as I can, and I know this just can't be that hard. I cannot believe that you didn't see this tonight. That you didn't see that there's no proof that the sin, a thief on the cross is the how to be saved. There's no proof for that. He's the who. You see it. Now the question is tonight. If Jesus were saying, why are you waiting? Rise, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on my name. See, you're actually calling Jesus as your authority for what you're doing. Would you do it? I think you would do it if you heard Jesus say it. You're reading it, you're hearing it. Who's in control tonight? Can you feel the Spirit's word, sword cut in your heart tonight? If you're here tonight, this may be your last chance. We're going to sing the song that actually is the message that we believe. Nothing but the blood. There's power in the blood to wash your sins away. God's love has been waiting for you, planning this since the beginning of the world. The question is, are you in control enough of your life to break free from the devil right now and be obedient to the saving gospel? The Romans road says, obedience to the faith. Why don't you obey the Lord right now while you have the chance?